What the hell happened? Part 17. In the last part, we talked about my wife Delilah and I really not getting along. She's not happy here. And I'm getting extremely frustrated with her just not wanting to help out anymore. At least not much. And the whole social media portrayal of the homestead versus what was actually happening here and how it was actually working out. And I also talked about Jezebel and how she treats animals and interacts with animals differently than I'm good with. Gonna put a disclaimer in this one. This video is going to contain conversation about animals not being treated all that well. And if you're not okay with listening to that, you may want to skip this episode and continue on with the series anyway. Let me back up a little bit. Talking about Jezebel, my sister, there was very obviously, throughout the entire time I have known her, some type of anger issue. She was, that was just the way she reacted to things was in anger. And so actually the only um, person to ever cause a physical in in injury to me as an adult was Jezebel. Um, I was, I don't know what I was doing. I was blowing a, blowing a, blowing a check that she was trying to deposit in. I was just being an annoying brother. Um, she was trying to deposit mobile banking. She got ready to take the picture, check move. I giggled, thought it was funny. She apparently did not think it was even remotely funny. And I ended up with bruises on my arm from it, which I actually still have pictures of. Um, anyway, because I had to like send her pictures and be like, was this really an appropriate response? <laughs> so anyway, um, back to homesteading. Before, before we got here, um, she was an animal trainer. She was a dog trainer specifically, not really an animal trainer. Um, and so she had an animal training, a dog training business, and she would train other people's dogs. She was very good at what she did. She understood dogs extremely well. Um, she was, she was very good at it. Um, however, and, and like with all her clients and stuff, I have no doubt in my mind that if anyone was a client of hers or anything, that their dogs were treated just phenomenally, like that it was just, it was just good. Um, however, with her personal animals, um, it was a totally different, different way of doing things. Um, and I observed pretty much everything, anything I didn't really observe, I'll just, unless she specifically stated to me, I'll just omit. Um, but... We actually got a Cane Corso before, or she got one before we moved out here, and it was going to, I don't know what its purpose was going to be. I, again, I wasn't the animal person. I was focusing on designing and building stuff. She got this dog, and she was going to train it. Well, the training wasn't going how she thought it was, and or how she thought it should go, and she would get extremely angry at this dog and she would just absolutely make sure that it was I don't know what I want to say just submitting completely to her and it just wouldn't do it um it was very fearful of her it did not you know and this this dog not all dogs do but this dog when it was fearful would bite and snap and get very defensive and this made her far more angry and she thought she could just continue just overwhelming the dog with I guess the idea that I'm bigger and tougher and badder than you and you need to not do this um, but it, from my observation it was a fearful dog and no matter how much more fear you send to a fearful dog it's not going to change the reaction it's just going to reinforce it um so ended up before we moved out here she brought the dog out with her said it was untrainable she wouldn't dare rehome it to another home with it being you know such a terrible dog and it came out here and with her and got put down and was actually buried here somewhere um so that, I don't know, I, I wasn't an animal trainer, I wasn't a dog trainer, I don't know anything about it, like, there are animals that are, 
uh, you know, not all animals can be rehabilitated, I guess. Um, however, that is not how you rehabilitate an animal. Um, that is not attempting to rehabilitate an animal. Um, and that's not, that's not the only, the only one. Um, there were all kinds of animals out here, rabbits, goats, um, guinea pigs, cats, um, and ended up that, uh, we had three, three cat, four cats, um, because my wife had one. She had three cats, we brought them out here to be Mausers, help keep the mice out of everything. It's an important part of the ecosystem here. Um, however, her thoughts on keeping animals, keeping cats going after mice was to feed them a very limited amount of food. Um, and what this resulted in was the cats looking elsewhere for food. That included our food. If they could at all possibly, cats can be like raccoons. They will absolutely dig into anything. If they're hungry, they will find a way to get into something and eat it. Um, so they were getting into food that we had for us. They were tearing it apart. Um, we couldn't stand in the same room with food if we like left the dish on a countertop. It would, you know, those cats would be all over it, you know, like grab something and run off with it and yell, holler and scream, whatever. Like they're just out of here. Um, the other thing they were doing was just marking on the countertop, um, fixed cats. I have no idea why they were, why they were marking all over the countertops. I've had cats out here and I've never had a marking problem. Like it makes sense if a cat goes to another property and marks because there's other animals there. Um, but I had intact males here for almost two years after all this, and there was, there was not that issue. Um, anyway, between all of that, she ended up deciding these cats were not good, couldn't be rehabilitated, didn't fit the life, and they got um, removed and buried somewhere on the property. Um, so, and all this is kind of going on, I'm not... You know, in hindsight, I probably would have just addressed and confronted her and just been like, you know, no, like you, this isn't, this isn't how you treat animals. This is not going to work. I hardly knew much about it at all. I just have a philosophy of how I want to work with animals. That's totally different. And, but I had never really put it into practice to say, this is how it works. Um, you know, I had a dog minion, um, still have a dog minion. <laughs> um, you know, it's, I've not always trained him in the best ways. I have no idea how to train animals when I'm with this dog. Like I have no idea. I'm learning same as he's trying to learn. Um, so it was a total, a total learning curve. I just have a different philosophy about it. Um, she had goats, rabbits, guinea pigs, and we had ducks. Um, I saw no issues at all with guinea pigs or rabbits. Like, I, I saw no issues with any of that. I don't know if anything outside of what I would do happened with them. I, I don't know. Um, the ducks and the goats, for the most part, um, unless she really had food or something, um, were fearful of her. And her goats were forever running off and, and disappearing and you know, she'd have to go get them and she'd be angry with them and all this stuff. And one time I found one with a gash right above its eye and I'm like, you know, what, what, what happened to this goat? And from what she told me, she wanted to, it was doing something she didn't approve of. Don't know what it was. Maybe it escaped somewhere. Um, but she ended up, she said she had a rock and threw it to scare it and instead ended up hitting it in the eye. Um, I also observed her like just picking up goats and just throwing them and, you know, get on this side of the fence and, you know, with ducks, like they were extremely fearful. You see ducks around here following people around all the time. Well, they ran from people um, when she was here in charge of the animals. The only way to get them into the, into where we wanted them to was to run around with a gigantic like crabbing net and like pin them to the ground and get a hold of the duck that way. That was, that was the only way. Anyway, I'm out of time. Next part.